So I saw this online um, and I felt that it was necessary that I shared with you. This is the president of Guyana in an interview with a British journalist. He put them back in their place. Yeah. Let's watch. Okay, let me ask you a question, Mr. President, um, on behalf of all of our viewers who would be covered by this. Why should somebody who maybe had an ancestor seven or eight generations ago, long before they were a twinkle in their great, 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 great grandparents' eye, why should they have to pay now for what an ancient ancestor did? Or why should they apologize for what an ancestor did centuries ago? Why do they still carry that burden? Wow. Did you hear that? Oh, it's not a burden at all. You are one of the beneficiary of that uh, slave trade. So this is not a burden. You should uh, be concerned and you should uh, pay because you today are still benefiting from the greatest indignity to a human being and that is a slave trade. And not only did you benefit during the slave trade and your country developed, but look at what it caused the developing world. During slavery, resources was used to build your country, build up your capacity. You were able to then become competitive. You were able to invest in mechanization and developing countries like ours were left behind. So you should be very concerned because you are a prime beneficiary of the uh, exploits of slavery. Yes, many people have benefited from slavery. And that's the reason why your country is better than many other countries. It's very easy for you to say, oh, why is your country not doing okay? Why are you not moving forward? Of course, how can our country do okay? When your country was benefiting, we were suffering. So it took us many, many years to recover, to be okay, to just breathe, to just drink some pure water. By the time you already owned many buildings, many stuff, many things, you were far ahead. Give us some time to catch up. So put a figure on it, please, because it's all, it always comes down to the bottom line. How much, how much should an individual taxpayer in a country like the UK be signing a cheque to a country like yours, Ghana? Well, it's easy to calculate. We can use the time value of money. You can look at the, at the period of slavery and the contribution uh, that, the, well, not the contribution, the extraction of wealth from countries like ours and how it was utilized to build uh, your society, build your country, create wealth in your country, and then add the time value of money and you'll, you will get the value. Wow, that's like a punch in the face. There's, there's a lot of research paper on this. Uh, uh, a lot of universities would have done paper on this. There's uh, in, enough literature to tell us what that value is. But I wanna say that it is not only the, the value, it is a loss of time. It is a loss of competitiveness. It is a loss of human dignity. It is a loss of our education system. It is the, is the culture that we lost. It is, a, it is all of this indignity that surround the slavery that we must consider. Unbelievable. I just wonder, people will be wondering what, um, you explain that there are calculations, but are you able to say in what measure that would be? I mean, are we talking billions, millions? What would you expect the payout to be and over what period of time? These people sometimes think they are way too clever. Like, you are stupid, you don't understand. They, they, they... Well, you know, this year in Guyana, we uh, commemorate the, the 200th anniversary of the Demerara Rebellion. And it took 200 years to get an apology from one of the families. I don't believe that the, you would want us to wait uh, 200 years for reparative justice and for us to take this conversation forward. CARICOM uh, would have set out a 10-point plan on what should constitute uh, reparative justice and what should constitute reparation. And uh, the calculation goes uh, into billions for the region. How far back, though, do we have to go on this? Because you make the point, we're talking exclusively here about uh, Western imperialistic slavery, to, 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 to summarize it. But almost every civilization on the planet 
owes its existence and its prosperity almost always to crimes in the past, be they aggressive wars, be they different forms of slavery involving different movements of population. You can go right back to the Greeks and the Romans. Why just target one particular era in history? Some would say that's the arguments of political convenience. It's, it's, it's a handy handle to, make your, I, to hang I, your argument on. I, I think you're doing a great injustice to compare slavery with any other uh, um, of, of the historical facts that you're mentioning. I was including other forms it's, of slavery. No, but I was, I was including other, other examples of slavery as well. To, to the indignity that slavery brought to people, that, that is the first thing. Now, that's a president for you. He speaks it like it is, he doesn't mash his words, he's very calm, he's not screaming, but he's telling you the truth. I'll give you an example. Coming on to your program a few moments ago, you were speaking about uh, net zero mm -hmm. and cli climate justice. We are speaking about, uh, the world is speaking today about climate justice and compensation and how we address the issues of climate change. And this is the problem. We live in a very unjust society. You know, <clears throat> we condemn completely the war in Ukraine. But if you look at the mobilization of resources, uh, in the war in Ukraine. In two years, you have mobilized more support for Ukraine than we have mobilized for Haiti for 60 years. You have mobilized more support uh, for Ukraine than we have mobilized for Palestine for 20 years. You have mobilized more uh, support for, um, for Ukraine in just uh, one and a half years than we mobilized to, to address the issue of hunger in Africa for three years. And that is the type of uh, 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 you know, unjust way we have been dealing with these crises. And we are not going to tolerate the injustice that occurred during slavery. The truth is we are not treated the same, okay? Look at the way they treated Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, Ukrainians deserve it, but compared to how the rest of the world are treated in many other places in the world, it's not the same. They showed you that this is not, yeah, it's, you don't treat people the same way. It's priorities. Very briefly, coming back to where we came in, one of the points you're going to be making today is about our royal family. And you feel that um, it's not just about uh, the, the finances involved here in terms of reparations for slavery, it's about the gestures. And you think that the British royal family should make a big gesture, don't you? What do you mean? Hand over a palace to your country? Well, no, we don't want, to hand, we don't want the British to hand over pal a palace that we built. It's really hard for some people to understand that we just as clever as they are, if not more, in many cases. You know, if you go into many of the palaces in, in, in Britain, you will see the lovely green heart wood from Guyana. You will see the, the sweat, tears, and blood of, of, of the slaves who were exploited. So what do you and, want? And the revenue that so was that was earned from their exploitation. So we are not asking for a palace. We are asking for justice and a fair form of justice to the ancestors, and to, the, uh, and to the greatest injustice that has ever done, been done to human beings. We look forward we're to not your... going to. We're not asking for palaces. No. You can enjoy the palace, and when we visit you, we will also enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching this. It's very interesting. Thank you so much. Um, your contribution is very necessary. So let me know how you feel about this. I want to read from you and learn from you. God bless.